Representative Quinn. Thank you very much, Chairman Harris and Chairman Thomas and uh, committee members. I really appreciate your interest on this topic. Uh, we are very fortunate to live in a society in which so many of our constituents gen generously donate. And donating to a charity, as we know, is protected by our First Amendment's rights as the freedom of speech. When our constituents donate their hard-earned dollars to a charity, they expect their money to be used for the intended organization to benefit others, benefit those specific to the cause stated. A couple of years ago, I took a, a look at the charities report that's released annually by the Department of State, and I was actually astounded by what I saw in the report. So astounded that late on a Friday afternoon in August, I picked up the phone, called the Department of State to make sure I was actually reading the report correctly. And unfortunately, I was. And I learned that very often, our constituents' donations are being solicited and processed by third-party fundraising counselors or professional solicitors. These professional fundraisers are pros, and as such, they talk to our constituents uh, in a manner that really convinces them to donate their hard-earned dollars. And uh, they really are not aware that such a low percentage of their dollars is actually going to the cause that's uh, been stated. So for the past couple of years, I've been tracking these reports, and the reports are available on the Department of State's websites. I've been working to find a way to address what, in my view, is near criminal activity, but it's protected under contract law and by freedom of speech. I've found very many examples, far too many examples, where the third party fundraisers give very little of the money that they raise to charity. In both fiscal year 2012 to 13 and 2013 to 14, the net amount of donations returned on average to the charities was just 36.7%. That means that the third party fundraiser on average keeps 63.3% of the contributions for their quote unquote expenses. And I say quote unquote because there's a lot of profit tied in with those expenses. <laughs> Numerically, that comes out to $1.53 billion of the $2.54 billion raised over two fiscal years. In many cases, that percentage going to the charities is even in the single digits. If you look through these reports, you will find donations going to the charities in the negative amounts. It's astounding. So as I was starting to look into this, I came across a 2013 report published by the Tampa Bay Times and the Center for Investigative Repo Reporting that reports in your package. And what they did was use federal tax finding filings from the past 10 years to see how much cash the charities spend to raise money and how much was spent on the people they're supposed to be helping. Of the 48 charities listed as the worst in the nation, three of them are located right here in Pennsylvania. That merits a musical background. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that the charities aren't based here in Pennsylvania does that not mean that they're not still reaching into Pennsylvania to ask for money from our generous constituents. I've developed legislation based in large part of what the, the state of Florida did to ensure that those soliciting funds on behalf of the charitable causes are doing their best in the interest of the charities and the people who donate. I've spoken with both the Corbett and the Wolf administrations while drafting this, admit, this legislation. And while I know that there are some changes that may need to be made, I am very confident that we're going in the right direction to educate the people that we serve and to tighten the rules, the requirements for soliciting, and to expose, just give more transparency to the whole process. Kids, vets, and pets. Kids, vets, and pets. Go through these reports and you'll be amazed to find how many charities are set up in the name of kids, veterans or pets, and, and money is solicited in those names and not really going to the charities. My legislation will enhance the requirements for third-party solicitors by including a licensure requirement, adding new disclosure methods, background disclosures, and prohibiting uh, 
people from soliciting for funds if they've been convicted in the past of certain crimes. The Department of State, through its Bureau of Corporations and Charitable Organization, currently requires fundraising counselors and charity solicitors to register annually. My legislation will add necessary qualifying requirements, penalties, and increased fees. House Bill 1240 will modernize fees and fines and dedicate funding for the department's uh, enforcement agency. You'll hear testimony today as to why that's so important. And I do have to add here, these registration fees have not been touched, meaning they've not been raised since 1992. I have a daughter born after that who's about to graduate college. It's time that we address these and bring money right back into the organization for enforcement. In speaking with the appropriations staff, this bill will generate an additional $1.7 million for the general fund through the new fees and penalties. It will also generate about $423,000 for the new restricted amount, account for the Department of State for their enforcement under this act. In closing, I really want you to understand, I've got to mention, these changes will not affect our small charitable organizations, the local Kiwanis or the parent-teacher organizations. These changes will affect those larger organizations that hire the third-party fundraisers to help them get, earn their money. We need to take steps to protect and educate our constituents and know that the money that they donated is being handled appropriately. Thank you for your interest and thank you those who've traveled far to uh, testify on, on behalf of the bill.